You're listening to WMCA New York. This hour of programming is paid for by the Talkline Communications Network. I'm Dove Cohn, and you are tuned in and listening to the Dove Hiking Show. Thank you for joining us. We're here tonight and every Saturday night to discuss current issues and interesting topics and to hear your thoughts, views, and opinions. Dove, good evening. Good fuck. How are you? I, I'm, pr- I'm pretty good, thank God. I uh, just came from the Bicker Cholom of Borough Park, Mal Vimalka, their dinner, their function. Can you believe I actually stayed for like an hour and a half. Uh, oh, is that unusual uh, for you? <laughs> it's about an hour and 20 minutes longer than, you know, <laughs> you when I stay at any function. Uh-huh. And someone actually said to me on the way out, the caterer, uh, the food was fabulous. The, uh, uh, he actually said to me, I actually noticed that you ate. You know, people, what is this? People watch me. I said, what are you talking about? He says, oh, I, you never eat at functions. Uh, How does he you. know? He's right, by the way. He probably <laughs> would be right, because if you ate at every function... He's right, he's right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, it was wonderful being there, and uh, uh, beautiful crowd uh, of you know men and women, a lot of wonderful honorees. Uh, they do a lot of good work. Anyway, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, a number of things that we happen to be involved in uh, in our office uh, First of all, the Pollard uh, situation. Uh, I think Pollard is in his 27th year in prison. And we're actually working on something uh, in our office with elected officials all over the state of New York. But one of the things that was discovered this week uh, that came out publicly uh, based on a freedom of information request uh, and material became public uh, is that Jonathan, you know, one of the things with Pollard being in jail and people getting involved in trying to to free him uh you know you, you always hear things like because people wonder why is he in prison so long uh and you know people say well there must be something in the file that we don't know about that is so detrimental that's so horrible that's why he's in prison so long that's why they're not letting him out and guess what and people over the years important people the former head of the cia uh, uh, and, and others say, you know, they've looked at the file, there was nothing there that, uh, w- that one would conclude, yeah, let him rot in jail. And would you believe that based on the material that came out this week, that uh, actually Pollard never spied against the United States? In other words, there is nothing in the file that is so egregious that this man should be sitting in prison so long. And this made, uh, made headlines in uh, papers and all over, uh, and now there's a new push to get Pollard out of jail. And uh, hopefully this time, with Hashem's help, with God's help, it will work. I know that members of the Congress, uh, 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 many, me- many members of the House, uh, actually, uh, we have both? Oh, my God. Uh, let me, we are going to be talking about a number of things, Pollard, Cholchat, other things. But one of the... One of, w- do we have everyone on the thing? Or? Well, I, right, we have Steve, uh, Steve Moore right now on the phone. Okay. One of the things we're going to be talking about that made headlines this week is uh, the situation uh, with Ustreicher, with the Yankee Jacob Ustreicher. And there was good news this week, and everyone was very, very, very happy uh, that finally, 19 months of being held in prison, and and uh, Miriam and you know the family making the argument that Yankee was totally innocent, not 99 percent innocent, 100 percent. He didn't do anything wrong. Uh, uh, finally, it's become pretty clear because quite a number of people have been arrested in Bolivia. Government officials have been arrested. They're in prison. They're the ones who set up Yankee. Uh, uh, so right now, the good news this past week was that uh, uh, Jacob Ostracher was released from prison. Uh, he is in a uh, uh, house 
Uh, he's in a, he's uh, in a house. He was released on bail, and now he's in a, a uh, private and, house. And we're all hoping, with God's help, that uh, this ordeal will end very soon. And the only way, of course, is when uh, Yankee Jacob comes back to Borough Park. We want to see him back home with his family, with his wife, children, grandchildren. That's when we will really rejoice. But we did have good news this week. Now, we have on the line... Right, right now, right well, with us, joining us on the line, is a gentleman who was very instrumental in this whole entire case, uh, Steve Moore, a former FBI agent and an investigator who actually looked into this and was convinced that Yankee was uh, innocent. Uh, Steve, are you there? I am here. How are you? Well, Steve, it's nice to talk to you again. I, we just finished, was it Wednesday night? Uh, we just did our... I, let me just point out that Steve Moore is one of those very, very special people. You know, uh, we, we, you know the word hero, uh, when that word is used, people like Steve Moore come to mind. Steve Moore is responsible. I want everyone out there to understand that Steve Moore was the individual FBI agent who went out there and investigated this case. You know, people like myself, members of the United States Senate, members of the House of Representatives, and many others, you know, when you hear a story like this, someone gets arrested, uh, Jacob Ostrach gets arrested, uh, he, you know, the, the, he was involved in money laundering, and you hear all these kind of things being bandied around, and people begin to wonder, you know, what is the truth? Is he really innocent? You know, maybe there's more to this, and I know that there was no doubt in my mind from the very beginning because of Steve Moore. Because when Steve Moore investigated this case and he came to the conclusion that this man was innocent, that Ostracker was innocent, it gave people like myself and others a level of comfort that we could get involved, that we're not going to end up finding out something that will embarrass all of us. Uh, Steve... Uh, Thank you. I, I very much appreciate that. I, uh, I, I, I have trouble taking credit for this because I think we all uh, suspect that, um, you know, that God, God was the one who moved this mountain. And uh, those of us who have dirt on our hands uh, sometimes get the credit for it. But uh, nobody would have listened. Nobody would have done anything. Though, though you took it on the airwaves, though you made made everybody hear it only God can force them to listen and and I think uh I don't want to take too much credit for this well Steve look I first of all your sentiments uh are totally in line with my philosophy in life and the way I feel about things you know the philosophy is that we need to do our part but it really is God that does his part uh but right. you know God only does his part if we are doing our you know, if we get involved, uh, and there's, yes. no, there's no question that was... Uh, j just tell us, now, now uh, Yankee Ostreicher is, is, is in a house uh, in Bolivia, uh, and we hope that very soon he will be home. But, you know, we're all very concerned, even though it's wonderful that he's not in prison anymore. Nineteen months of being held in prison. Uh, horrible thing, you know, when you're innocent, you never did anything wrong. Uh, but we are concerned about his well-being, uh, even though he's out of prison. Am I correct? As, as well, you should be concerned. Uh, while while the um, government of uh, President Morales has has taken great strides, uh, admirable strides, uh, in in getting uh, Mr. Ostreicher out of that horrible place he was and into this home. He can't control. I mean, he's not everywhere, and he can't control uh, all these all these different factions and all these different groups that have been accused of uh, of uh, extorting Jacob. And and so, yeah, uh, there is there is a risk. There is. Uh, well, that's, that's uh, he, he needs to be home. That, uh, well, that's, we're grateful that he's out. Absolutely, and that's why I have been involved uh, in touch with Senator. Uh, Gillibrand, Schumer, uh, many others, uh, make sure the State Department is aware, A, we got to finish the job. We're happy he's out of prison, yeah. but we got to finish the job. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our uh, listeners, we have on the air with us, I believe. Yes, uh, We I actually we have Yankee Ustracker from, from Bolivia. Bolivia. Yankee, are you there? Um, yes, you are. Hi, uh, Yankee. Good luck. How are you? Good. Steve is still on the phone. That was a surprise. Yes, he, he is. is he is. He is on the phone, Yankee. I, I, I. First of all, how are you feeling? I'm in okay. general, in general. 
I'm all right. Okay, Yankee, I, I just want to tell you that that uh, myself and so many other people out there, I got to tell you, wherever I go, uh, you know, people are concerned, people care, people ask me, you know, you, you've sort of become, we're all family, but this is the perfect, uh, the only way I can actually describe it. We're all family and we're all concerned and we're happy that you're out uh, of the prison, but of course... I want to make a l'chaim with you here in Borough Park. We want to get you back to Borough Park, to your wonderful wife and to the kids and to the grandchildren. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, i got to tell you, uh, before we get into any details, uh, when my wife, uh, Mary, uh, Mary, called me on Friday that you want to talk to me for a couple of minutes on your show, I uh, told my wife, how could I say no to you? Uh, so before we get into the conversation, I have to tell you, Dolph, what an incredible human being you are. And I'm not saying it because I'm, uh, because I'm talking to you. Uh, you have to understand that the first year when I was in prison, while I was in this hell, while every congressman and senator of New York was monitoring the case, you were the first official government official with a mic in his hand going and organizing the protest standing next to my wife and my children with all the support. It's unbelievable. It's, it's amazing what you did. And as, as far as um, making sure, I, and, and from what I understand from um, um, my wife, she told me that you were actually the one who got an appointment with uh, Senator Gillibrand on a Sunday morning, and you got an appointment with uh, Senator Schumer. My wife has been trying for months to get senators and congressmen involved and all they did was monitor the case until you came along uh, um, and Dove, and you really made a difference so in the name of my family and myself I can't thank you enough Dove. it's yeah. incredible you were actually the first government official who actually did something about it yeah, Yankee let me just tell you uh, first of all I appreciate that but uh, for me this is a no-brainer when a fellow Jew, a fellow human being is in trouble, this, this, you know, this, you got to do, there's no choice. You have to get involved, you have to do. I remember Yankee telling people, I was telling even senators and even others, and by the way, trying to, con to convince them that you were in fact innocent. You know, everybody is not 100% sure, maybe this, maybe that. I said to everybody, make believe it's your father. Make believe it's your grandfather. What would you do for your father and grandfather? And I want you to know that your wife, and I don't have to tell you this, but let me tell you, her determination, her passion for, for nonstop, literally nonstop, going out there, never being discouraged, just, you know, when the day was over, the next day started uh, to do everything in the world uh, uh, to help you. I mean, just remarkable. I know she's your wife, but... Let me tell you something. I, I, she, she just. I learned a lot from your wife, in terms of dedication and devotion, because it was nonstop, and and the way she did it, the, with class and with such. Uh, I, I don't even know what to say. And thank God you're finally out of that prison. Uh, what no what question. what else there's can no you question. tell us, Yankee? There's no question. There's no question about it. Um, my wife has been a rock literally like a rock throughout this whole ordeal and she kept the entire family together i mean everybody who has been in contact with her uh, told me the same thing what you just told me it's, it's amazing the strength that she had i never knew that she had that that, that kind of strength um she's she's an unbelievable woman absolutely no about it yeah and look steve is still on the phone is steve still on the phone steve is still on the phone steve are you there yes sir please uh Hi. Hello, jacob good to hear you Yes, yeah, thank you very much, Steve. You know, I, if, if you allow me, Duff, to say a word or two about Steve. Oh, please. I, lo I love Steve. Are you kidding? Um, Steve is unbelievable. Steve is the actual, the only um, government official. I mean, he was a retired FBI agent who was actually in this prison with me. Nobody else besides my family and my children were actually inside the prison. Even uh, Congressman Chris Smith, who came twice to Bolivia, they didn't allow him to go into this prison. Uh, Steve Moore actually walked in there by the, telling the Bolivian officials that he is uh, my brother-in-law, 
And Steve is an incredible American, um, an unbelievable human being. Steve spent with me three days in this hell. What an amazing man. Uh, traveled all the way from California, investigated the case for months. And if it wouldn't be for Steve, um, nobody in the Congress would have gotten involved. And like you said before, um, but like you just said, uh, Dove, people hear a story of somebody goes to South America, you don't know, you know. Uh, we Americans are smart and are sophisticated, and, and uh, as we think we are, it's very hard to believe that there is a country that you could travel to a third world country and be totally innocent, and a prosecutor could take you in front of a judge and say, I want this man in jail, and they just put him in jail. It's very hard for us American to want, for us Americans to understand that. So it was through the work of Steve Moore that the congressman took this case very seriously. And let me tell you another thing about Steve. After spending three days with me in prison, right before he left, I told him, Steve, how would I ever be able to pay you back? And Steve told me, Jacob, if I could get you, help you get out of this hell, you paid me in full, and you'll buy me a nice kosher deli sandwich when you come <laughs> home. And when I called Steve, when I called Steve right after I was released, Steve told me, Jacob, I could smell that kosher deli sandwich. Wow. So I don't smell it. I don't. I don't smell it yet. But Steve is smelling it. We're getting there. We're getting there. We've got time. I can't. Thank I can't so wait. My mouth is watering, Jacob. And uh, well, you, my friend, are a hero. You had to live there. You didn't give up. You were the one who who didn't say, "I give up. I'm not going to go further. I'm gonna. I'm gonna end it all." I'm. You were the hero. You and you and Miriam. Uh, people are. People like I am proud to know you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. It's thanks, thanks to you, thanks to my wife, thanks to my children, thanks to Dove, thanks to a whole bunch of people that gave me the strength to keep on fighting. If I wouldn't have gotten that support system, I would never be able to do that. And while I'm at it, let, allow me to thank Dove for 36,000 people who I've never met, I've never seen them, who signed that petition. Right, right. Thank you all, and may God bless you all. Uh, you know, I, I would like to mention a couple of names. Um, Please, go right ahead. I, I, I had no idea, Dove, what went on while I was in that hell. I, I had no clue. Um, all I was focused on is try to make sure to stay alive. And as Steve told me, Jacob, right before he left, he said, Jacob, promise me that you're getting out of this hell vertical. You're going to do whatever it takes to get out of this prison alive. But 36,000 signatures in, th in less than 30 days is an incredible achievement. And if it wouldn't be for Jack Walker Walkowitz, I've never met this man. His name is Yankee Walker Walkowitz, mm -hmm. a person by the name of Duvet ha uh, Hammer. Uh, amazing. My wife told me when I she just came here, she told me, you Yankee, you are not going to believe those people were relentless. They left their families behind. Their families became number two. Their jobs became number two, and I became number one. And those are people, though, that I have never met. I don't even know who those people are. And they, those people worked for a person by the name of Yoli, Yoli Wurzberger. Right. Gave away his office, though, for three weeks they were literally working around the clock and promised my wife that in less than 30 days they will have the 25,000 signatures. Right. And guess what? It was 35,000 signatures. So yeah. that is incredible. Thank you to all of them. Absolutely, Yankee. I want you to know, uh, you know, wherever I go, and this is not today, yesterday, people, the number one thing people ask me is about you. What's the story with us, Stryker? What's the latest with us, Stryker? What more can we do to be helpful? And that's, that's what our community is all about. And I don't just mean Borough Park. Way beyond Borough Park, many organizations got involved, as you know. The OU, the National Council of Young Israel, so many different people. Uh, and, and everyone understood that what you were going through, that it could be them, it could be anybody that you are just an innocent individual uh, and everybody wanted to do, everyone was looking for something to do to be helpful. Let me ask you a question. 
this Shabbos, I know you're not home yet, and with Hashem's help, with God's help, uh, you will be home soon. Uh, what was this Shabbos like for you? You know, you were out of the prison at least. What was it like to have at least a little bit, bit more peace of mind? Can you just give us a little sense of that? Um, very hard to describe it, um, how I feel. Uh, I'm almost numb to the whole thing. I, I almost feel like I'm in a, in a dream. Uh, while I was in prison, you know, prison became my family, became my life. When I got released, that's when it actually hit me. Wow. Um, very hard to explain how I feel to someone who his freedom has never, never been taken away from him. And I, like, I, like, you, like you mentioned at the beginning of the show, I was totally, not only was I totally 100% innocent, but the, the sick thing about this whole thing is that the prosecutors who were involved in the case knew I was innocent. It's not like Dove where they did an investigation, a legitimate investigation, and they thought maybe I had something to do with any criminals. This was all planned, premeditated, they have gotten all the documents prior to my arrest. They knew that I didn't invest in this country one single Bolivian peso in cash. So it, it's very hard to, to explain that, how you feel when, you, when 560 days was taken away from you. And I'm not just talking a, a, a prison. You know, when Steve saw this prison, Steve said, Jacob, I've been to prisons all over the world. I have never, never seen something like it. Uh, that's true. So wow. walking, walking out of the prison, you know, one, once you're in the prison, the only way to survive in that prison is to become, to become a prisoner. You got to be part of the system. Right, right. And you, you got to do what prisoners do to survive. Um, and when you walked out of the, when I, when the judge gave me my freedom, I had a problem walking into my apartment. My wife was standing outside. I said, I can't do it. Um, it was, it's very hard to explain. I said. I just can't deal with it. I can't face reality. I was watching people walking on the street, cars driving around, people walking around freely. I, I just couldn't deal with it. And I'll be very honest with you. I, I didn't even tell that to my wife yet. The very next morning, I told the police officers to please take me back to the prison. Oh, my God. Would wow. you believe that? It, I just couldn't deal with what is happening in front of me. I realized the devastation after I was released. And, and, and I'm right now in the process of dealing with it. Uh, so I, I know everybody around me is happy and everybody is celebrating and I appreciate it. And, um, and I know, Duff, that there was a lot of people behind it. And again, I, I don't know if you're aware, but it's basically the work of Sean Penn. Oh, who yes. made oh, it yes. happen. Amazing, amazing. And it, it's amazing because I don't know if you've heard of this organization. There's an organization called, you've mentioned the different uh, organizations before. Right. But have you heard of an organization by the name of Aleph Institute? Yes, of course, of course. Sure. Okay, I have never. I've heard of the Hatsula, I've heard of Bika Choylam, I've heard of right. Shamrum, I've heard of a lot of organizations. I've never heard of Aleph Institute, and maybe because I've never had a legal issue right, before. Right. But. Let me tell you something, Duff. They have a Rolodex probably as big as a room. It is amazing what they have done in the past year and a half. They were relentless. They didn't leave a stone unturned. And they are actually the one who got a hold of Sean Penn. Because they realized that without Sean Penn, I would probably not be able to make it. And it's because of the relationships that he has with certain countries who are very close to Bolivia. And they never took no for an answer. They had business people behind them traveling from South America, from Israel, from Europe, back and forth to the United States, Los Angeles. And they never gave up. And they were right there next to my wife, and their phone was literally open to my wife 24 hours a day, and not six days a week, but sometimes seven days a week. So this Aleph Institute, this is an institute I've never heard of before, they are amazing. And if it wouldn't be for them, Dov, you and I wouldn't be talking tonight. Right. I would still be in Palma Sola. Well, Yankee, with Hashem's help, you'll be back soon. With God's help, you'll be back home with your children, your wife, your children, grandchildren. There's a story for you to tell. There's so many facets to it.
I, I have to tell you on a personal level, you know, I've never been a great fan of Sean Penn. We have different views on a lot of things. I've become a huge fan of his now. A huge yeah, neither, neither was neither was I. Dominic. Exactly, was but I, more, I love uh, right uh, now. I, I, I'm a fan. I, I'm a huge fan, and it's a lesson for all of us to learn about people who might be different than we are. You know, we can disagree, but Sean Penn played such an important role in this, and the whole story will be told. Maybe you'll do a book uh, when you come back. I think that would be. Uh, amazing to share everything. Yeah, let me ask well, you. Champagne, Champagne actually was asking me, told me, Jacob, you got to write a book about it. And I told Sean, I don't know how I'm going to be able to put that in, into one book. It's going to have to be five books. And, Listen, and, and, Sean, and Sean is such a humanitarian. When Olive Institute got a hold of him, and, and it's amazing how they did it with so many people involved. I mean, I, I could talk to you for hours. Right, right. But it's amazing when Sean found out that it was an innocent American in jail. And I know Sean is portrayed in different views than you have and I have, or Steve Moore has. But he's an incredible American as well. Exactly. He didn't ask, I... whether, he didn't ask Dov whether I was white or black, or what my religion is, or whether I was Democrat or Republican, when he found out that an innocent American has a family with five children and 11 grandchildren and is being destroyed in a foreign country when he didn't do anything wrong, Sean Penn dropped everything yeah, and came right. to Bolivia. Right. I, Amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful story and a lot for all of us to learn from the difficulty that you had. There's so many things to learn. I, I want to ask you a question. While you were in prison, and there were literally thousands of prisoners there, th did people identify you ever as a Jew? Did they even see that, or you were just another prisoner there? Well, they knew you were an American. Did that ever come into play, uh, that this guy is an American and he's a Jew? No. Um, the answer to that question is no, and that's because they don't know much about Judaism in this country. Uh, as a matter of fact, somebody saw me there once with a yarmulke. I usually used to go with a cap, but they saw me once with a yarmulke, and they asked me if I'm a Muslim. <laughs> um, I was basically identified in the prison. Uh, you have to understand there was 3,200 prisoners when I walked into the prison. When I walked out of the prison, there were 4,000 Five hundred prisoners, wow. and I was the only, the only American in that prison. So I was identified as the Gringo. Wow! And so I was a Gringo. I was the American, but never, never, never had an issue. I've had a lot of issues in the prison, which we're not going to get into right now. But right. never an issue about my religion at all. No, that wasn't an issue. Well, look, and I don't think, and I don't think of that my arrest has anything to do with my religion. Right, I think it was right. an issue of corrupt individuals, as everybody knows now. I don't know if you're aware of, but as of today, 12 people, very high-powered people within the government, are in prison. Of and course. it's only the beginning. Uh, by the time this investigation is over, uh, you're looking at probably 20 to 25 people, and I'm not talking people fucks from the street. I'm talking no, what, very high-powered government officials who are going to be going to jail. Yeah, from the Justice Ministry, Ministry of Interior, all kinds of people. Uh, those are the people who set you up. These were the people who put you in prison. Right. And they, yeah, and it's amazing because, you know, like I said before, you know, we Americans, we think we know it all. When this investigation started, I really thought that it was a legitimate investigation. So the first You, you are cooperating with them. You were giving them everything. Not only that, but what I did is the first thing I did is when they came into my farm, is the first thing that I did is that I traveled to La Paz. I went to the U.S. Embassy. I asked them for advice. The embassy never told me, Jacob, leave the country. They told me, cooperate with them, tell them the truth. I went back to the United States, brought them documentation. They were looking for additional documentation. I went in between, the, from the beginning of the investigation until they arrested me, Dov. I was four times in the United States bringing back documentation. Unbelievable. And little did I know that this was all happened. While I did all of that, they were planning how right. to pick me up and arrest me and take everything away from me. Um, I don't know, Duff, if you realize what has been happening. I mean, just, uh, just so you understand and your listeners please, understand. Please, sure, please. You have to understand that the, the government officials put me in jail after they realized the amount of money that was invested here, 
And the biggest heist of Bolivian history happened, and not a word has been written about it in the newspapers. I mean, could you imagine, Duff, 425,100 pound bags of rice disappeared? Could you fathom that? I mean, you're talking about close to 1,200 trailer loads of rice disappeared, which is close to 45 million pounds of rice, and not a single word has been written about it in the newspapers. And Yankee, you were involved. What you were doing there was going to help the Bolivian people. It's not, it's not, it not only was it going to help, I did help. I had hundreds of Bolivian. I didn't have a single American, I didn't have a single European person work for me. Every single person who worked for me was an indigenous Bolivian person, 99% of them, and the rest were Bolivian people. And my lowest scaled worker received more money than the Bolivian government pays their police officers. Wow. So not only not only was it going to help them in the future, because the plan was to basically, literally, give away rice close to 7 million hungry people, and the rest we were going to export. So, but we weren't there yet. This was like an eight-year plan, and right, without right, getting right. into much detail. But, but while they picked me up and put me in jail, there were close to 500 Bolivian families that I supported. Wow, amazing. Steve, uh, you're the, you're with us still. We gotta get we we gotta get Jacob home. Oh yeah, we we're, gotta we gotta, not, we gotta get him home. Uh, giving up on this, of course and not. I think uh, that what Sean has done, is, and you're right, he he and I. Can you imagine somebody more diametrically opposed to Sean Penn's politics than an FBI agent? <laughs> uh, and I and I find myself not only working with him but uh, admiring exactly. his work on Jacob. Uh, even though we still have disagreements, but he is, uh, he really did this for one reason, and that was for Jacob. Wow. Um, but yeah, we are not giving up. The, the job is not done. He is still not in a completely safe place. And, and more importantly, he's not in America. He's not at home. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And well, you know what I'm surprised? Before, before I go, Steve, I'm amazed that you've been on the phone for 10 minutes and, I'm, uh, and you didn't plug your book yet. I mean, Steve Moore has just wrote a book. <laughs> well, we're, we're uh, gonna, listen, we're going to have Steve I, I on. Know, I don't know if, um, if I'm allowed to say that, but, uh, if, uh, Dove, if you would allow me to say that, Steve, I'm surprised that you're not mentioning your book because I've read this book in Palmer Solar Prism. My daughter actually brought me that book, and what an incredible book. Uh, uh, Dove, I suggest you you and your listeners buy this book, Special Agent Man, well, a riveting we... book about Steve Moore's experience uh, while he was 25 years uh, at the FBI and also on a very personal level, his personal life in the book, an incredible book. Uh, I just couldn't put it down. It was a great book. Yankee, we're going to have Steve on our show. We're going to do a whole show uh, talking about the book, and we're going to have uh, Steve on. And I look forward to reading the book myself, of course. But look, Steve, you got a great agent, Yankee, uh, plugging your book now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I guess I do. I just didn't want to mention it because I don't want people to think that I'm tying anything to this other than listen. listen I got to tell you, I have I have been involved in in these kind of cases before. Only ones where I would bet my life that the person is innocent. And you always get involved before you know the people because you don't want to get close to somebody and then realize, you know, a nice person, but they did something creepy. Um, it was, I, when I finally met Jacob, I realized not only was he innocent, but this was a man worth fighting for, and it was just such a pleasant surprise. To, I mean, this these, these are the kind of people who not only were innocent in this, but they're the kind of people worth fighting for, and I'm so grateful uh, grateful to know him and, and Miriam, who, who I would not want to compete against in any sport, any legal issue, any anything. Uh, by the way, Yankee, Yankee, you got to make sure Miriam doesn't run against me the next time around. 
<laughs> no, she is an incredible woman. It's amazing to see. I never she's... knew that. I'm, I, 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 it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, everybody who has been in, in uh, trying to help uh, help me in that case, uh, ju- they don't, ju- they could not believe the strength that she showed Absolutely. throughout this whole thing. She is incredible, she, you know, and, you, you know, and amazing. And by the way, Steve, by the way, Steve, please thank your wife. I don't know if you know Dove, but Steve's wife set up a Facebook with 900 members praying for me every oh, single wow, day. Wow. Uh, unbelievable. What an incredible woman. I tell you, the more you hear about this story, the more you find out the people involved, the more, you, you know, it's just like one of those beautiful stories. And I'm telling you right now that Sean Penn is going to play you, Yankee, in the movie. There's no doubt in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm predicting that right now. There's no doubt in my mind. Okay. <laughs> We, we didn't talk about the movie. We spoke about the book deal, but we're not there yet. Uh, I'm still here, and I still have a lot of security around me, uh, around the office. Um, of course, it's, it, it beats being in a prison, uh, but I'm still not out of the woods yet. Right, right. And we're all... And I, I still haven't had my sandwich, uh, uh, Yankee, so I am not going to quit until you're home. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, by the way, Dov, do you know of the best... Deli, deli sandwich that I could get for Steve in New York or uh, in Brooklyn. I there's one in Brooklyn, not far from your house, Yankee. And we're gonna we're not gonna get him a sandwich. We're gonna supply him with sandwiches for at least a year. <laughs> okay. I mean, we'll, we'll keep those pastrami sandwiches coming. Uh, okay. Well, not not one sandwich. Much more than that. Anyway, this is Thanks. just incredible, Yankee. To hear your voice and to hear Thank you, you. Uh, you know, again, what you've been through. None of us, we can try to imagine it, but no one can possibly, yeah. you know, to, to, the idea of every single day, the days go by, the weeks go by. And you and I, Yankee, had some conversations, and now that you're out, I, I, you know, I heard your voice, I heard the pain, I heard what you were going through. And if you remember, I was trying to encourage you, it's going to be okay, you'll see, it'll work out. But, you know, I felt your pain, I, I took it home with me at night. And thank God we're at this point, and we just got to finish the job with God's help and bring you home. And that thank will you, happen you, soon. Thank you, thank you very much, Dov. And again, I wouldn't be able to do it without the help of my children, my wife, you, Steve Moore, Olive Institute, all of the people behind it, knowing that 35,000 people signed the petition, people that I don't know. And this is, this Chris is Smith what in New Jersey. gave me the strength and the support to continue. Yeah. It, 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 it's because of all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yankee, uh, uh, be safe. We look forward uh, to having you back here very, very soon. And all of us are watching on top of it. I know the State Department is very involved now in making sure that uh, everything goes smoothly with you. And I just can't wait uh, to give you a hug here in, Bur- in uh, Borough Park. Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very Steve, much. thank Thanks, you so, so much. Steve, again. Thank you for having again. me. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you. See you soon, Jacob. Take care, Steve. Yep. Thank Take you care. so much. Bye-bye. I tell you, I am, uh, Dove, I am just so... I, I, that, that, I, that I, I don't know if I can continue the show. No, that was amazing. I, I, I don't know if I can continue. We didn't publicize uh, at all. that he would be on because we weren't sure. Again, this is Bolivia. This is Bolivia, ladies and gentlemen. We're in Brooklyn, New York. The studio's in New Jersey. And it's just remarkable that there's so many pieces to this story. There are so many things. There are a lot of things that I, I w- would like, like to talk about when the right time comes. But it wasn't easy, Dove. It wasn't easy to convince people. In the very beginning, uh, I had to beg and plead in some cases, Dove, uh, because there were just people who... You know, they just didn't believe. You know, maybe there is something here. Maybe he did something. Uh, and and it was hard to get people involved. I'm talking about I, even political think, people. And I think the thing that convinced everybody was when we first saw that Nightline uh, piece about his story. And I just want to mention, though, I just got a, uh, a text message uh, from Chasco somebody. Bennett. What, Chasco Bennett telling us that thousands of people are davening to him every day. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, and I, yeah. uh, I just saw it now. Otherwise, I would have told Yankee the same thing. Yeah, but that, yeah, that yeah. really is amazing. No, I... I, I uh, you know, wherever I go, Dove, I told it to Yankee and Steve. You know, this is the thing. You know, there are a lot of things we're involved in. There are a lot of things going on in the Jewish community. But uh, I think the uh, Yankee Ustracker 
case, the situation, the, the, the recognition, though, again, everyone just think for a second. Sit down, you're lying in bed, relaxing. Just think. Think. A month, 30 days, right? Two months, 365 days a year. And then comes, you're into the second year, and the time is going by. And, and you know, at some points, you start wondering, am I ever going to get out? I mean, I'm, you're dealing with a country that we know quite well, you know, what Bolivia represents, what Bolivia is all about. Look at the fact of all these people who were arrested. Exactly. I mean, that's a exactly. whole different story right. to be told. How did that happen? How did all these people get arrested, all these big mockers in Bolivia? They're all in jail, and more are going to be arrested. It, it's, i got to tell you, there is no doubt, this will be a book, and this, this will, will be turned into uh, more than a book. This because be there's so many facets to it. There's so many facets to it, so many parts to it. Uh, and thank God we are, at this point, and if you were listening to Yankee... I mean, the one thing he said that literally blew my mind when he said about going back to prison. I mean, you got to understand what that means. You li you're living in a prison for 19 months. How many days is that? 500 and something days? And suddenly, you're free. You're able to you're go free. out. You're right? free. You can't deal with it. Like, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, him admitting that publicly, he wanted to go back to prison. No, but he that, definitely that, sounded. That was dope. his home. He definitely, exactly. He definitely sounded, as the conversation went on, more yeah. chipper, yes, much happy, stronger, more right, stronger, and right. so on and so forth. Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. I really am. I uh, uh, wow, unbelievable. Right. I don't know what else I'm going to talk about, <laughs> but we'll do uh, some commercials and then we'll come back. We'll talk a little more about this. We'll talk about the uh, Pollard thing. Right, I, I, just I had mentioned the Sholhat thing, and there are other things to talk about as well. Right, and I just want to mention, when we come back for a few minutes, we're going to dis uh, have someone on the phone who's going to be discussing an a, a organization, uh, Ezer Metzion. They're having a concert next week, next Matzai Shabbos, so we're going to just talk for a few minutes about that. So stay tuned. We'll go to a commercial right. and be right back. Right. Uh, you're listening to the Dove Hiking Show. Amazing. Hi, this is Bracha Jaffe, and I would like to talk to you about an event that will be taking place next week, Monday Shabbos, December 29th, at Brooklyn College at 8 p.m. Forever, the concert of the year, brought to you by Ezra Mitzion, the largest Jewish bone marrow registry in the world. Together, we've worked with the GYL Productions to create a perfect combination of professionalism and tenius, a show that will take you into a story of family, relayed to you by song and dance, a night that you will laugh, you'll cry, you'll feel uplifted and you don't want to miss and what a better way to spend your Matzei Shabbos supporting a child who is in need of a bone marrow transplant you can save a life by just being there on December 29th at Brooklyn College please call today and buy your tickets 718-564-3096 or 347-524-9899 718-564-3096 or 347-524-9899 to purchase your tickets. I can't wait to see you all and help me save a life. We'll sing, we'll dance, we'll have an incredible time. HealthGrades has once again named Maimonides Medical Center a distinguished hospital for clinical excellence, placing it in the top 5% nationwide for clinical performance. In addition to this designation for overall excellence, Maimonides achieved recognition from HealthGrades with an excellence award in cardiac care, pulmonary care, stroke care, general surgery, and coronary intervention. Plus, Maimonides continues to rank number one in New York for critical care. Now celebrating its centennial year, Maimonides Medical Center is among the largest independent teaching hospitals in the nation. Widely recognized for its major achievements in advancing medical and information technology, Maimonides has over 70 subspecialty programs. To learn more about the nationally recognized clinical services at Maimonides, go to its website, www.maimonidesmed.org, or call 718-283-6000. That's 718-283-6000. Maimonides, passionate about medicine, compassionate about people. Confused about changes in the home health care regulations? Are you being told services are about to change? 
Let At Home Solutions help you. At Home Solutions is a trusted name in the home care industry, servicing the five boroughs in Nassau County. It is licensed by the New York State Department of Health to provide home health aids, nursing care, housekeepers, as well as all therapies, and is accredited with the gold seal of approval by the Joint Commission. At Home Solutions provides quality, compassionate, customized home care with careful attention in identifying each client's needs. Changes are taking place in the home care environment. Let At Home Solutions help you navigate the transition and find the best possible solution to your home care needs. At Home Solutions has two locations to serve you better, in Brooklyn at 2299 Coney Island Avenue and in Queens at 11102 Jamaica Avenue. So call them at 718-441-6802. That's 718-441-6802. You have questions, they have answers. At Home Solutions, the company you can trust to give you the right solution. Call them at 718-441-6802. It's the greatest sales event of the year, and it's going on now at your neighborhood dealer, Bay Ridge Toyota. What's the event, you ask? It's Toyota-thon, and it's when you find the lowest lease prices of the year on every Toyota in stock. Like the all-new redesigned 2012 Toyota Camry, leasing for just $189 a month. A Bay Ridge Toyota Toyota-thon exclusive. Need something for the family? How about the 2012 Toyota Sienna for only $249 a month? Plus, every new vehicle comes standard with two years' maintenance and roadside assistance from their award-winning service center. Come into the showroom on the corner of 65th Street and 5th Avenue or call 866-BUY-TOYOTA for all the details. Bay Ridge Toyota, just steps away from Williamsburg and Borough Park, is open seven days a week for your convenience. So pay him a visit at 65th Street and 5th Avenue and choose from Brooklyn's largest inventory of new Toyotas and their everyday 10 used vehicles under $10,000. Check them out online at BayRidgeToyota.com or call them at 866-BUY-TOYOTA. That's 866-BUY-TOYOTA. Don't miss the lowest prices of the year during Toyotathon. Lease is based on 39 months, 10,000 miles with one nineteen ninety five 95 down. See dealer for details. If you missed out on booking your midwinter break flight to Israel, Dual Travel has good news for you. Now you can call and book a ticket on their group flights direct to Israel. That's right. Dual still has availability on their group flights. But don't wait. If you try to book on your own, you know that most flights have been sold out. But Duol still has some seats available. So now is your opportunity to travel to Israel during winter break. And if you're making plans for Pesach, Duol has special fares to Florida and London. So remember, whenever you want to travel, think Duol. Their expert and knowledgeable staff can help with all your travel arrangements. Flights, hotels, cars, cell phones, business or pleasure, Duol does it all. Any time, any place, any destination. Call Duol at 718-972-6000. Fly right and travel right with Duol. Call them at 718-972-6000. And we are back with the Dove Hiking Show. And uh, as I promised you uh, just before we went on the break, uh, we have with us on the phone uh, Bracha Jaffe, who is involved with an organization, an amazing organization called Azer Mitzion. And let me just tell you that next Motoy Shabbos, they will be hosting a benefit concert in Brooklyn College. Um, it's for women and girls, so we want everyone to make every effort to attend. Bracha, are you on the phone? Hi, how are you? Okay, very good, thank you. First of all, tell us a little bit about Ezer Mitzion and their mission. So Ezer Mitzion is an incredible organization. Um, their mission internationally is the largest Jewish bone marrow registry and what they try to do is find a match for any person who's in need of a transplant Um, and as most of us know a DNA match is needed so only a Jewish person can donate to another Jewish person because we have the same genetic pool so that's their mission to spread the awareness for people to really really do everything that they can to support the registry monetarily and also to become registrants so that they can become donors All right so now you're hosting there there is going to be that benefit concert next uh, next uh, Motai Shabbos so just tell me is it too late to get tickets or people can still get tickets and how do they get tickets it is not too late I am urging people to call and get tickets. Yes, tickets are going, so please call today and get your tickets fast. You can call, uh, there's uh, one main number, 718-564-3096, 718-564-3096. 
718-564-3096 to get your tickets. Um, I urge everyone to come. It's an incredible story related to you with song and dance, and it's going to be such an inspiring night. Uh, it was so successful in our last location in Muncie. People don't stop talking about it. We're getting incredible feedback, and I urge people to come and support such a great cause because really what you're doing is supporting life for Kali Israel. Um, so it's so important to come and support Ezra Mitzion. All right, now tell me, Bracha, uh, you're a nurse and you're also a singer, so how did you get involved with the organization? Um, exactly as you said, I'm a nurse, and my specific uh, job is that I'm an oncology nurse. And because I see this on a daily basis, where I come to work every day, I see patients who are in this predicament or in this situation that they need help from others, and some of them need a bone marrow transplant. And I was just very inspired by the need to spread um, the awareness. And Ezra Mission is such an incredible, heartwarming um, organization. They are so they so want to give and do everything that there was no better organization to do this for. I wanted to spread the word for them, and a big part of me is song, and I felt the best way to relay that message is through song. So um, we're combining those two things together, me being an oncology nurse, me loving to sing, to be able to relay the importance to um, our community. And I know Aza Mitzion does a lot more than just having the uh, bone marrow registry. I know they provide many, many services. They have a blood bank, food distribution, medical equipment loans, referrals. Uh, it's, it's a wide-ranging organization. And I just want to th throw out some numbers, which I looked up actually after you and I had a conversation. Since they, since they were founded in 98, they had 20, over 20,000 searches requests received. And over 4,600 matches were made f through the registry. And yes, isn't so, that incredible? And that is an, uh, that's unbelievable. And over 630,000 poten potential donors joined. So it really is an amazing organization. Uh, it's an amazing cause that you're, you're working with. What's uh, more incredible about those numbers is that if we reach um, about a million or a little above a million registrants, donors, potential donors, we can potentially find a match for every single person who can need a match an hour in Kali Israel. And that's why it is so important for people to support as a Mitzion, um, you know, give tzedakah to them, and to really come and show their support next week, December 29th in Brooklyn College. And what time does it start, the concert? 8 p.m. 8 p.m., wonderful. Bracha, this is uh, the other dove. Uh, thank you for what you do, and I just urge everyone out there, first of all, this is a great show. Uh, I, I have heard of the show. I, uh, I, no question people will have an amazing time. You'll have an amazing time, plus you'll be helping, uh, as Bracha said, you'll be helping life itself. The number is 718-564-3096. I repeat, 718-564-3096. And by the way, if you're in bed and you don't have a pen and you can't write it down, uh, just call Dover the office in our office on Monday and uh, we'll help you, we'll put you in touch. Bracha, thank you very much and good luck. Thank you uh, so much for having me. Absolutely. I hope it's standing room only. I hope so, too. I mean... <laughs> take care, Bracha. All the best. Take care. Bye -bye. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. She sounds like a wonderful, uh, wonderful is, young is. lady. Uh, anyway, i got to tell you, Dove, I'm still like... Uh, uh, overcome. I mean, I, I'm just thinking about our conversation we just had. I'm just pinching myself. Uh, uh, did we just speak for a half hour uh, with Yanki Ostracker? Well, I want you to know, uh, though, just amazing. I, I, I called him Friday afternoon on my way home. Right, just to see if he'd be willing to come on. He said, he, and he sounded very weak, and I was very, very nervous. And even when I called him right after Shabbos, just to tell him and to ask him if he, you know, he will be able, again, you know, he said, I'll try, you know, uh, and again, sounded very weak. But like you said, as, we, as he went on, uh, he, got, he got stronger. And it, it was a, uh, an unbelievable experience, you know, talking to him. Yeah, yeah. And considering that, he's in Bolivia. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Anyway, we started talking earlier tonight about the situation uh, with Jonathan Pollard. You know, you're thinking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ostracker, of course, was totally innocent. He never did anything wrong. He spent 19 months in prison. Uh, uh, no one is condoning <clears throat> what Jonathan Pollard did, but uh, him being in prison for 27 years is unconscionable. It is immoral. It is so wrong. And uh, hopefully uh, 
the time is coming now that he will be freed, especially in light of the information that has just been released. You know, people were trying to sell the public that he did something so bad. I remember people saying that American agents died as a result of uh, Jonathan Bollard. All these uh, stories uh, that were spread about, because no one could figure out, it didn't make sense. Why Pollard is still in prison? Uh, well, the latest information uh, is definitely uh, uh, definitely helps the cause. Uh, we are lining up. Uh, it'll be way over 100 elected officials uh, who are signing a letter to the president that Shelley Silver and I are organizing, the Speaker of the Assembly. It'll be members of the Council. It'll be senators. It'll be members of the Assembly. It'll be way over 100 uh, Every effort has to be made. Now's the time uh, where hopefully the President of the United States, uh, I mean, it, enough is enough. It is, it is unconscionable for him to still be uh, in prison. There's another situation, uh, I think we're running out of time, something else we're involved in, uh, the Shohat case. Uh, this is a young man from Crown Heights, by the way, married with kids. Uh, uh, do we have time to go into that? Even? Oh, we, I think we, we, have, we have about two minutes. Anyway, uh, the DA in Brooklyn is trying to get him extradited uh, uh, back to New York. Uh, the, the, the issues involving this young man, he's been accused of uh, uh, committing a racial uh, crime, a crime, which a is crime, right? a hate crime, which is absolutely not true. Uh, it's a complicated story, but I am involved with many others. In fact... Uh, met with Alan Dershowitz just a week ago. I think it was I met with Alan Dershowitz. He's involved. Uh, we're trying to get the attorney. And, and, the, and the organization that uh, that Yankee mentioned. That's right. The Al the Al exactly. Al right. Al so we're trying to get uh, uh, the Attorney General of Israel not to extradite uh, uh, Shohat back to the United States. At least not under the circumstances that exist uh, right now. So these are, you know, we're talking about all these different cases. Very, very important. Right, it, was very, it was a very busy week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Among everything else, right. all the other things that we are uh, involved in. It's important that everyone, uh, Davin, say to Hillam, keep these people in mind, and uh, uh, with God's help, uh, you know, we'll uh, get good results. Okay? I think we're on our way with us, Driver. Right. I believe that uh, Pollard, too. It's now really a question of very, very little time. Well, this he is must, must be released, and I hope things work out with Shohat. Anyone, Dove, thank you very much for making this happen tonight. It was my pleasure, uh, as always. You know, again, we didn't know till the very, very last minute that it would actually happen. Everyone out there, have a wonderful week, a safe week with only good things. Uh, you know, one of the things I did want to talk about, and we have time to talk about it, is the situation... Uh, you know, in Williamsburg, where what's his name was found guilty, the, Web, the Weberman, the Weberman case, thing, right, right. Uh, the whole thing. There's an appeal that's uh, going to be going on. Right, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about we'll it. Talk about Not that. next week. We will be talking right. about it. Anyway, everyone out there, have a wonderful, wonderful week. All right. Uh, come back next week and listen to another edition of the Doe Viking Show. Thank you for joining us. WMCA, New York, a service of Salem Communications.